You know, we always say that God is so good. What a blessing it is and a privilege to be able to come into his presence and come before you guys. And we are so grateful for this opportunity. Uh, you know, all we can say is God is good. God is, good. <laughs> God is blessing yeah. us and uh, we just praise him today. I am so glad to have this opportunity. You know where the psalmist, uh, he wrote, I was glad when they said unto me, yes. let us go into the house of the Lord. And so we know that the house of the Lord is not about a building. Uh, you know, it is about the people of God who Amen. are gathering together in his name. He said when two or three gather together in his name, that he is right there in the midst of them. I'm so excited about that. And so we're entering into uh, the house of the Lord. The Bible tells us that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run therein and they are safe. You know, so it is just something about being with God in the presence of God. The Bible tells us that in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And that his right hand, there are pleasures evermore. So this should be a time uh, that we frequent often. As a matter of fact, that if we're not frequenting uh, this space often, then we will be dry, we will be depleted, we will be operating off of our own uh, strength, which is temporary. There's only so much that we can do because we're human and we get tired, but yeah. with the supernatural power of God, that even in the midst of our weaknesses, that then God is strong in us. So we should be coming into his presence uh, daily, consistently, uh, so that we can just uh, be near him. And then there's always this exchange that's taking place when we uh, come into uh, God's presence. You know, even on the cross, Jesus uh, took our guilt and shame uh, yeah. in his own body, and Amen. he has given to us his righteousness. Amen. God Amen. has given to us his righteousness. He takes our gloom and our sorrow, and he gives to us the oil of joy and gladness. Amen. Amen. You know, he takes away the spirit of heaviness and he gives to us the garments of praise. Amen. Amen. And Amen. so, you know, we're able to come before him. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. So if you're breathing out there today. Amen. God has done anything Amen. for you, and we know that he has. Uh -huh. You are to just praise God. Praise you know you are to be praising God uh, and being thankful. And uh, so today we're going to focus on what I'm going to call uh, the growing dangers of the spirit of entitlement. Uh, last week, we talked about uh, the dangers of pride you know, dealing with pride. And, uh, you know, pride, the Bible says in Proverbs that it goes before a fall. Pride goes before a fall. And it also tells us that God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. You know, when we call upon him, he will uh, answer us. But the one that is prideful will try to do things in uh, their own strength. They'll try to get it done uh, with their own wisdom or knowledge or understanding. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the Bible says that God hates pride. Mm -hmm. He absolutely hates it. Mm -hmm. If there is anything that we know about this loving God, is that he hates pride, you know? And so we have to love what God loves and hate what God hates. And so, uh, you know, the Bible tells us to humble ourselves 
under the mighty hand of God and in due time that he will exalt us. So we have to uh, uh, practice humility, practice uh, putting God first, practice leaning upon God each and every day and not having that, well, I can do it myself. I don't need anybody. I don't, you know, uh, or just really focusing on ourselves. Uh, in Proverbs 8, 13, it says, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. Mm -hmm. You know, so even in the way that we would talk, even in the way that we will look, you know, it says in one place, a haughty look, you know, where we have this uh, stance, even though we may not say anything, but our look says, mm -hmm. you know, that I, you know, I don't need you and I don't need anything else. God says that he hates a proud, haughty look, yeah. you know, but if we're, you know, to fear the Lord is to reverence him you know, to give honor to him that what he says and what he thinks matters to you and that it is your supreme source. It is how you govern your life. He is the one that we want to please, you know? And so when was the last time you asked yourself, God, am I pleasing you? Is my life pleasing unto you? You know, are the things that I'm saying, the relationships that I am, I'm in, you know, uh, is my marriage pleasing to you? Is the way that I'm raising my kids pleasing to you? Uh, you know, and so we, we're asking God. And so it says to fear the Lord is to hate evil. That's why you're asking. You know, because God, if I'm doing anything evil, I want to stop it, mm -hmm. you know? And so that is humility. You know, when we humble ourselves un under God, we submit ourselves unto the Lord and we resist the devil. We resist pride. You know, we resist arrogance. We resist haughtiness. And uh, then the scripture says, I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. So even in the way that we're talking, you know, we're always um, talking to exalt ourselves. Do we feel like um, we are to be the center of the conversation? And if we're not, if it's not about us, mm. you know, then we're not really interested in the conversation. If you're not talking about me, you're not trying to help me. Um, if you're not focusing on me, then I don't want to have anything to do with you. Mm -hmm. Or that I'm just not interested because it's not about me. <laughs> you know? Right. So uh, we have to understand that pride is serious uh, because as I said, God opposes the proud, you know, and we don't want God to be our opponent. That's we right. do not want um, our, our uh, we, used, we did this play one time called uh, Your Arms Are Too Short to Box With God. You know, uh, you know, we don't want God to be opposing the things that we're doing, uh, that we're trying to advance his kingdom, but God is fighting us. We're trying to get healed, but God is fighting us. You know, we're trying to uh, you know, accomplish certain tasks, but it just seems like it's just so difficult, you know, that we want to uh, check that, check our hearts, you know, check our, our, our speech, you know, check our look, uh, what is our stance, what have we been saying, you know, and have we been uh, talking in such a way that God says that it's pride, it's arrogance, it's evil behavior, and your speech is perverse, you know? And so the, uh, the uh, heart to that is to repent, mm -hmm. you know, that it is to repent. And one thing that I hear the spirit of the Lord say in this hour is repent. repent. You know, that he's calling us into repentance. 
He's calling us into humility because as a nation, we have said that we're going to celebrate pride. You know, that we're going to celebrate our independent decisions to be and do what it is that we want to do. And so, you know, last week we prayed and we declared we are not a prideful nation. We are a nation that humbles itself because we do not want God opposing us. So uh, definitely the church should be in repentance, especially all of the month of June. We're coming to the end of it, but really all for the uh, the rest of this year, saying to God, you know, I want out the church is saying that we are a humble nation, that we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, because we know that God will oppose the proud. It says, but he gives grace to the humble. He gives more and more grace to the one that will humble themselves. Yes. Glory to God. Amen. First Peter 5 and 5, it says, young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older, all of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because yeah. God opposes, opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. It says, uh, it, says it in James 4 and 6 and it says it in 1 Peter 5 and 5, you know, that we are to clothe mm-hmm. ourselves in humility and how we deal with one another. You know, that we are humbling, that we're humbling ourselves. And let me tell you something, pride is the strength of sin. You know, sin, and, and we're refusing to repent when we know that something is not right. It's pride. It is pride right. that is keeping <laughs> us uh, from doing that. And so uh, we have to say, God, I repent. Lord, forgive me. I, and, and really live in a lifestyle of repentance. If we didn't handle that situation right, don't ignore it. Don't say, don't try to move on, move forward and be like, oh, well, no, repent. Repent in the name of Jesus, Jesus. because Jesus. you want your, your way to be cleansed. You know, you, you, you don't want to continue in your own way. Uh, so, you know, we repent in the name of Jesus. And Luke 14 and 11 says, for everyone who exhausts himself will be humble. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. You know, so God says, if I have to humble you, mm. then, you know, it's, it's not going to be a good thing. <laughs> it is not a good thing. For God to have to humble us. Mm. But he says, if you humble yourself, then I will exalt you. Yeah. Amen. So we learned that the way up is the way down. Amen. That, you know, if we want to go higher in God, then we must uh, bow our knees, bow our heads unto God because we recognize who he is, that he is sovereign, that he is God, that Jesus is Lord. We recognize that. And so we want God to be um, glorified in us. And we want to be able uh, to have the glory of God to impact us. I'm talking about the life-changing glory of God. Not not just because you went to church and you felt good because the choir sang your favorite song. Not that. Mm -mm. You know, I'm talking about where tears are running down Mm -hmm. your Mm. face, where you are repenting. You know, you can't help but pray in the spirit because the glory of God fell upon you, where bodies are being healed Mm. and you know, people's lives are changing. They're getting out of fornication and adultery and all sexual per, uh, 
perversion, all of that. I'm saying where you know you were once lying and now you're not lying anymore. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. You know, that kind of glory yes. where the glory of the Lord comes in, in your house. You don't even have to be in church. That's right. Amen. It comes in right into your, you know, your kitchen or your bedroom, wherever you are. And you just begin to weep and worship God. <laughs> You Amen. know, your, your children are like, well, why are you crying? you like, you know, I'm just crying because of the glory of God. Yes, the good. So I'm experiencing the presence yes. of God. You know, and let me tell you that uh, repentance is what brings in revival. We, uh, we cry out, God, send a revival. God, we want revival. And that's great. But we have to know what that means. If we want revival, Amen. then we have to humble ourselves. Yeah. We, have to repent. we have to begin to call um, those things that uh, have been, that we know have not been right before God. We have to ask God to cleanse us and to forgive us. Yes. And, and humility, you know, it is is what is required uh, before revival come comes, and so in Proverbs eleven and two, it says, "When pride comes, then comes disgrace." Yeah. But with humility comes wisdom. You know that we will have the wisdom of God if we humble ourselves. Amen. You know the you know contrary to popular belief that Google is not all wisdom <laughs> or all knowledge. You know, there is, so what if you have um, a gift or you have abilities, but you don't know how to use them to profit. You don't know which direction to take them in. Even Solomon, who was the wisest man and the richest king of all time, ended up living, uh, he did not finish strong mm -mm. because though he had wisdom, he did not apply it when it was needed. That's true. So it's, it's the applied wisdom. It's the applied knowledge, you know, of doing uh, the word of God, the will of God that brings about the right kind of result where the, the result where we can finish strong, where we have the kind of victory that Jesus has promised that we will have, Amen. you know? And so we know that every downfall, and if anyone falls from grace, it is because of pride. Mm. And it says, but humility mm. comes before honor. You know, God... God does not have a, a, a problem with us being honored, and he will even honor us, but not if we're prideful, That's true. not if we're arrogant, you know, not if our, our speech is perverse. So, you know, God is calling us uh, to be lowly in spirit. That is what gains honor. You know, a man's pride will bring him low, it says in Proverbs 29. But a man of lowly spirit gains honor. Hallelujah. So we're talking today, we're going to talk about um, the spirit of entitlement, which is just another uh, form of pride. Uh, you know, that it is uh, the belief that one is inherently, inherently deserving of privileges or special treatment. Mm. And let me tell you something, that thing is a lie. It is humongous in today's society. It is uh, being pushed to our children. And if we are not careful, uh -huh. you know, it, it has come into the church you know, that we are inherently deserving of privileges, a special treatment, and mm -hmm. that if we do not get it, then we have a temper tantrum, you know? And so it's the feeling that you have the right to do or have what you want without having to work for it. Mm. 
where you believe that this is mine and I don't have to do anything to get it. And that totally goes against the uh, biblical teaching because, you know, the Bible says that faith without works is dead. Yes. So the only thing that we do not have to work for is our salvation. You know, no, you do not have to work for your salvation. You do not have to go and say, you know, hell marries and you don't have a requirement of the number of times you have to pray every day. and You don't have to, you know, uh, light candles or anything like that for your salvation because Jesus mm -hmm. did all of that. What he did on the cross settled all of that. And the only thing that pleased God was the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so now we are remission of our sins because of that blood. You know, we have um, that exchange has taken place and it is not about our righteousness. Our righteousness is as a filthy rag. You know, when we're trying to do things right, well, God, am I doing this right? Well, if I do this, then I know God has saved me wrong. You know, God has saved us because of the finished works of Jesus Christ. He has given to us his righteousness. And that is what uh, has put us in right standing Amen. with God. But there are things that we do because we are righteous. You know, there are certain disciplines that we must operate in because we have um, this faith and belief in the works of Jesus Christ. So, you know, Jay says, hey, yeah, you have faith, but you're, you're going to have to have corresponding actions that go along with what you say it is that you believe. Right. And so if we feel that we are entitled to some, we are not entitled to anything. Okay. <laughs> Let me just say that because what we deserve was hell. That's what we deserve. Yeah. You know, but God gave to us his grace. That the, the very definition of grace is his unmerited favor. Amen. You know, it's like you cannot earn God's grace. Mm -mm. You know, he gives it. Okay. We cannot earn his mercy. That's mercy right. says, I, I, I'm I, not having mercy on you. You know, I'm giving you something that you do not deserve. So we do not deserve anything. <laughs> I want to um, read this. Uh, Second Kings. Second Kings uh, chapter five. And this is um, the healing of Naaman. Naaman was the commander of an army. Uh, he was uh, very victorious. He uh, was revered by the king of Aram. And uh, Naaman was a, a air man. And uh, the um, Aram was always in battle with Israel. They were always fighting. But at this particular time, they were at peace. And um, Na Naaman had leprosy. And there was absolutely no cure for leprosy. Leprosy would uh, disfigure you. You know, it would turn... The, your pupils, uh, this horrible color, like this white color, it would change the color of your hair. And uh, if you had leprosy, you were sure to have a short life. And uh, so, of course, the king was very concerned about Naaman because he had, he had this, this disease. He was this great fighter, this great warrior. I uh, won many victories on behalf of Aram, but he had leprosy. And um, so an Israelite young girl who was uh, the slave of the king mm -hmm. said to the king's wife, she told him about the, um, a prophet that was in Israel that would heal him of his leprosy. So 
uh, the one king says to the other king, I'm sending uh, my uh, chief warrior to come and I, I want you uh, to ensure that he gets healed. Well, the king got upset because he thought that the king was trying, trying to trick him. So the king of Israel thought that the king of Aram was trying to trick him. Because like I said, they were always uh, fighting each other. Mm -hmm. But at this particular time, they were, they had some level of peace. And um, so one of, uh, someone said, no, uh, no, you don't have to heal them, king. Somehow or another, it got to Elisha. And he heard that uh, the kings of Aram's commander mm -hmm. was coming to be healed. And so he sends the king a note and he says to the king, don't worry about it. Just send him to me, you know, stop fretting, stop being, you know, because the Bible says that the king tore his clothes in dismay, you know, that he was just full of anxiety and fear. And uh, like, you know, he asked like, why is this man asking me to heal him of leprosy? And he was like, he's just trying to pick a fight, mm -hmm. you know? But after Elijah heard about it, he sent the message to the king. He says, why are you so upset? Send Naaman to me and he will learn that there is a true prophet here in Israel. So in verse, uh, 2 Kings chapter five, verse nine, uh, it says, so Naaman went with his horses and chariots and waited at the door of Elisha's house. But Elisha sent a messenger out to him with this message. Go and wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Then your skin will be restored and you will be healed of your leprosy. But in verse 11, it says, but Naaman became angry and stomped away. Now, listen, <laughs> he was like, this man, I came all this way. Does he not know who I am? I'm the commander of, of Aram's army. You know, it's the king and then it's me. You know, how dare he not get it? You know, Elisha didn't even bother to get up, to even go to the door, okay? Told his messenger, just, just go give him this message. But the message was the instruction for you to be healed. But Naaman said, I thought, he would certainly come out to meet me. Mm -hmm. I expected for him to wave his hand over the leprosy mm -hmm. and call on the name of the Lord, his God, and heal me. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. How many times mm -hmm. have we missed God? Mm -hmm. Because we felt like we were entitled Title. to more. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. that something is happening. Did God have to heal Naaman? No. The fact that he even heard about a prophet. He didn't know that. He didn't mm -mm. Know that was in Aram. Aram was another country. Mm -mm -mm. He didn't even know anything yeah. that much about the God of Israel, you know, in terms of, of, of healing and, and, the, and, and, and he didn't have to know about it. He mm -hmm. heard about it. Because of, um, you know, I'm sure since they had uh, slaves that were Israelites, I'm sure that he's heard stories and, and things like that. And every time that they would come up against the children of Israel, you know, they knew that they were coming out with their, you know, the <laughs> ark and things like that. So mm. he, he knew something enough because he was like, well, he ain't gonna just wave his hand over. <laughs> he was just saying, God, just something. Or one of the, one of the uh, prophets or a man of God, well, we gotta do something, you know. But he says, um, aren't there, aren't the rivers of Damascus, the Abana and the Farpar better than any of the rivers of Israel? Why should I wash in them and be healed? 
So Naaman turned and went away in a rage. He was in a rage because he did not consider the Jordan River to be mm -hmm. the best. And so if you're going to heal me, send me to what I consider to be the best. You know, wow. Such pride and, and, right. and, and entitlement. And this is that he loved everything. He already God had already given him the, uh, the, the strategy. All he had to go, and, and it wasn't even that deep. You know, and a lot of times we can miss it because we're looking for it to come the way that we think that it should come through the people that we think that it should come through. And God has already given us the strategy. You know, God will already tell you. Yes. Mm. So then Naaman and his entire party went back to find the man of God. Mm. All right, before I get there, I skip the head. Okay, so verse 13. But his officers tried to reason with him and said, Sir, if the prophet, if the prophet had told you to do something very difficult, come on mm. now. See, even the even the people around him was like, look, right. come on, man. Yeah. Really. So they're trying to reason with him. And he says that if the prophet had asked you to do something very difficult, would you have done it? So you should certainly obey him when he, when he says simply, go and wash and be cured. Mm -hmm. I love the word. I don't you know the word? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Just says it the right way. It's like, it's like, all I can do is go, wash, and be cured. Mm -hmm. And it says, so Naaman went down to the Jordan River and dipped himself seven times as the man of God had instructed him. And his skin became as healthy as the skin of a young child and he was healed. Mm. Mm. Yes. My God. Hey. Oh my God. God. See? You know, let me tell you something. God was so merciful and gracious because he could have said, fine. Mm -hmm. I, you know, don't do it. But in, in, in the midst of it, God says, I gave the man the instructions. It's still, uh, it's for him. God did not take it back. He saw how the man acted, but Naaman had to humble himself. Mm -hmm. And thank God that he was surrounded man. by people who cared enough to say, come on, oh. man, you know, just go yeah. and do it. That's all you have to do. And it's over. You know, for the right. rest of your life, you That's will get right. rid of this. You know, it, it, you would think that um, his condition okay. would have had him to say, hey, I don't care what I have. I, whatever it takes, I'm going to have to do it. But the spirit of entitlement says, no, I, I have a right. You know, I, I have a right to have this. And I want it the way I want it, how I want it, when I want it. And then if I don't get it that way, I'm going to have a temper tantrum. Mm -hmm. And so we... um. The only thing that we need to understand when this happened is that we need to repent. Repent. We repent. We ask God, Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive me. Because our entitlement prompts us to focus and complain about blessings that we don't have or that we haven't received instead of being grateful for those we have received. Amen. Amen. You know, you have all this stuff that God has blessed you with and then we, we focus on the one thing that we don't have mm -hmm. and it just mess up our day. 
That's true. You know, uh, it, and, and so that's why we said we always have something to praise God for. Mm -hmm. We Amen. always have something to be thankful for. It is just about our perspective, you know? And so we don't focus on what we don't have. We can ask for it, you know, because God is our source. But hey, you know, in, in the waiting or in the process, we continue to praise God because God is good. Amen. God you know? is good, yes. And so we cannot be so consumed with getting things and having things. We want things because somebody else has it. it or because we feel that, well, because I'm of a certain status, or I have this uh, amount of money or I have this amount of education that this then is what I am entitled to. And so, you know, when you have a nation that is being run by right. leaders who think like this, mm -hmm. it Why is not? infectious. Then the people will begin to think like that. That's right. Entitlement is infectious. You know, we can raise our children to be, uh, to have a sense of entitlement where they feel that they don't have to work for anything, that they should just be handed yep. everything. We can raise our children. Sure. Like, mm, mm, mm. But when the disciples ask Jesus yes. to teach them how to pray, Jesus says, pray our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Be done. Thy will be done. Where we are saying, God, I want to be right according to your standards. Amen. And I, your way will dictate to me whether or not I'm actually right. But entitlement places oneself at the center of their universe. You know, where it's all about me. It's all about what I want. It's all about well, I, where I want to go and what it is that I want to do. If this marriage ain't working for me, if it's not making me happy, then I'm going to get, I'm going to get out of it. You know, never mind the fact that mm -hmm. you are, uh, you have kids whose lives, you know, that you are destroyed all because, you know, you want it to be about you yeah. and your universe. You want to be selfish. Yes, it's selfish. Selfish. You know, because, you know, I remember one time today, <laughs> and the thing about it, Denise, I'm not ashamed to say it, because, you know, that was me back then. But now it's totally different. You know, um, I let my pride get in the way and my selfishness get in the way because it's not what I want, want what others had is what. I want to be also recognized also, yeah. you know, and, and I let my pride get in the way yeah. and I see that, oh, things is not going the way that I'm hoping to, to go. Yeah. But once, you know, I got in the word and started praying, praying and God changed my whole mindset, yeah. you know, and I can see how God is working in me, yeah. you know, and through my family. Yeah. But, but in the same time, we have to stop being selfish. We yeah. have to stop to look like you said, look at what, what people have or yeah. how they got in the way they got in, you know, yeah. because God is going to place you anyway, yeah. you know, and where you think, People think you don't deserve it, but God said it's yours. It's yours. That's and, right. and he placed me where I'm at today. Right. You know, and I'm grateful. Yeah. You know, but we just gotta um stop looking at what, what people have. Right. We gotta stop looking for a, a hand out, you know. Yes. We gotta stop, you know, we because stop that. And, and and stop thinking that we deserve things. Right. And Simply along, because we exist. <laughs> right. And as long as we think like that, we not only we hurting ourselves, we're hurting the people that around us, our children, our loved ones. 
you know. Mm-hmm. So we have to, like you said, we got to pray. Yes. You know, we yes. got to seek yes. God more and we got to stop being so selfish. Yes. Amen. You know, because <laughs> selfishness will get you in trouble. Yes. And I believe, you know, like you said, it's your pride, but pride doesn't pl- play the part. Yeah. yeah. The part plays is yourself being yeah. selfish. Being selfish. You know, God didn't place us here on this earth to be selfish no. and being prideful. Because if he did, it would be everything would be so different. Mm-hmm. You know, but it's not. It's not. You and know? it's not because of uh his grace and his yes. mercy. Yes. You know, and through repentance, yes. you know, um, the Bible tells us surely goodness and mercy will mm. follow us all the days Amen. of our lives. Amen. And that is one who is following after God. Amen. And so the entitled um, one will say, well, God is following after me. You know, mm. we we want to give God instructions mm. <laughs> on what we want him to do. To do. You know? Right. <laughs> you know? We want to really create good. our own God. That's right. And I don't know if this has anything to do, but what comes to my mind is we have to humble ourselves. Yes, we have to humble ourselves mm. and seek God. Yes, and ask God to guide us, yes. to change our mindset, yes. you know, so we can yes. do what the words say. Amen. So we don't be looking out for handouts. So we don't be say, this is mine, you know, mm-hmm. you know, validation, you know, mm-hmm. from anyone. Only validation that will come from is God Himself. Amen. Absolutely. That is so good. Well, we're not seeking to please man rather than pleasing God. Right. And uh, that that's a, a, a very real, real thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that's the other end of it, where we're people pleasing. Mm-hmm. You know, still that is uh, self-sacrificing on ourselves on behalf of others. Right. You know, where we want uh, to be liked. You know, we want to be accepted by man and that we're willing to do whatever it takes to get their approval, to get, Mm -hmm. you know, their applause. Right. You know, that kind of thing. And so uh, all of it requires repentance and that we understand that, um, God, I embrace your grace because I wouldn't even be here. Uh, alive today without God's grace Amen. and his mercy yes. because I deserve uh, hell. Each and every one of us deserves our own cross. Mm. You know, to be crucified on that cross. Yeah. You know, we deserve those nails in our hands and our feet. We deserve those 39 lashes on our backs with cat and nine tails. You know, we deserve that crown of thorn and for our our blood to be shed. Mm -hmm. But Jesus became that sacrificial lamb for us. And he has given, uh, through through Jesus, God has given to us his grace, that undeserved favor. And our, uh, it replaces our deserved judgment. Yes. It is the grace of God that keeps God from judging us. We Amen. should be judged and Amen. sentenced, found Amen. guilty. Yes. And so we were forgiven by the cross yes. and by the amazing love of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is the grace of Amen. God that has saved us. You know, that strengthens us. It is the grace of God that sustains us. It is by his grace that we are sanctified. 
Yes. Come on now. That uh, washing and that cleansing, cleansing. Uh, it is by the grace of God. God. Amen. Amen. And so our response to that should always be a grateful heart, a That's heart right. that is filled with gratitude, you know, a heart that says thank you. You Amen. know, Lord, that I am not going to um, make this situation about myself. That's if right. I'm Amen. going through something, I may not like it, but, you know, uh -huh. am I to say that I should not be going through this? That's right. You know, that I should not be experiencing, you know, these things. And, but God, I'm just grateful. Right. I'm thankful because you are in control. Entitled, right. being entitled says, I want to be in control of my own life. You know, how many times have you heard, um, you know, messages like that? You're in yeah. control. Be in control of your destiny and be in control you know, that is uh, the spirit of the Antichrist. That's right. Where you are, are exalting yourself, you know, and you're saying that I want to be in control mm -hmm. of where I'm going and what I'm doing. And we uh, should know from experience that anytime that we are in control and we start leading things, we mess it up. <laughs> we mess it up every single time. We end up in big boo boos. That's right. And then we say to God, Lord, if you just get me out of this, mm -hmm. I promise you, I will never do that again. Well, right. you know, that grace and that mercy, you know, it's like God, instead of you having to humble me, mm -hmm. you know, I have the power, the grace oh. of God Amen. to humble myself. Amen. So yeah. I respond with the grace of God. Amen. And so, you know, we have to ask ourselves, you know, ask yourself, do I have the spirit of entitlement? Right. Is that how I have been operated? Because it's easy to recognize it in others. But Amen. it's often hard to identify it in ourselves. And so, you know, let me ask you this question. Do you often feel discontented? Are you murmuring and complaining about what it is that you don't have or what you are trying to get and you just can't seem to get it? Do you feel envious or resentful over the blessings of others. Mm. Are you disappointed with mm. your life? Do you just feel like, you know, man, my life is just not together. Everybody has something to be thankful for. Amen. Even every one of us. Mm -hmm. And I know that there may be some bad situations and not saying that we don't need things from God or that God will not give us, you know, these great things. He will, he will. but not because we deserve it. That's right. Mm -hmm. But because he deserves it. That's amen. That's right. Amen. <laughs> you know, he deserves our praise. That's right. It is all that, his. It's all his. That's and right. if he chooses to bless us with it, our response should be thank you. If you thank choose you. not to bless us with it, our response should be thank you. Thank you. That's right. At all times. All times. So why thank are you disappointed others. with your life? That's right. Don't thank others how you got. Thank God. You That's know, right. Some people say, well, you know, they get, you know, they, you know, get a financial blessing or whatever. Yes. Sit in them thanking God. They thank the person that blessed them with it or gave them to them, you know. Yes. But they still forgot to bless God. Amen. And if you continue to do that, you know, yes. and, and, and it, you, it's it's um it's pride. Yeah. You know, e e even if um you know that humility, even if you think it's being humble. Yeah, you know, but if you're still making it about you, you, 
you know, if, if you don't think that or you doubt God's provision for you, mm-hmm. you know, that God will bless everybody else, but he's not going to bless you, that is false humility. That's right. And that's right. Amen. You know, or that, oh, no, I just messed up so bad. You know, there's no way that God is going to forgive me. I need to do this. I need to do that to, you know, work my way out. Right. Yeah. You know, because that's not God's way. That's right. That's not his way. His way is for us to humble ourselves. And we say, God, whatever your way is, if you say I need to repent, I repent. If you say I'm supposed to have this, I receive it in the name of Jesus. I don't try to do my own uh, penitence. That's right. You know, where I say, okay, well, God, I'm going to give you uh, three uh, laps around the sanctuary, and then I'm good. (laughs) (laughs) As if, no, that's not why why we'll put you in right standing. It's our faith, and I believe in the finished works of Jesus Christ. And so all we need to do if we have been operating in a way that we know that is not pleasing to God to repent. Repent. And we say, God, we humble ourselves. That's right. You know, I oppose uh, being prideful. I refuse, oh God, help me, Jesus. Help me. Yes. You know, mm. To not be prideful, I humble myself. Uh, that's right. You know, because I don't want you opposing me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to oppose or resist pride. I resist it. <laughs> if I right. see that it's coming, I'm resisting it. That's right. You know? That's right. So entitlement is rooted in a prideful heart. Uh, uh, uh. But the core of the gospel uh. says that we are not entitled to anything. That's right. But God gives to us that which we cannot earn. That's it is right. unmerited. Mm. I want us to look quickly. This is our last scripture. Look quickly at 1 Kings 22. 1 Kings 22. Yes, 1 Kings uh, chapter 22. And this is uh, two kings, Jehoshaphat and Ahab. Uh, at this point, the nation's are still divided. And so we have the northern uh, kingdom, which are called the Israelites, and we have the southern kingdom, which is called Judah. And so we have the king of Israel, and we have the king of Judah, Jehoshaphat and Ahab. They're having um, a, a conversation, and they want to... Uh, this is when they are at war with um, Aram, okay? So remember I said they continue to fight each other all the time. And at this time, they are at war with them. And uh, they're trying to decide, uh, should they go up and capture the king of Aram? Should we go and get, get the king? And so Jehoshaphat said, uh, well, he asked Ahab, I I think that we should, but let's go up. Will you join me in going up and fighting them? And so um, Jehoshaphat and Ahab, they agreed that they're going to go and do this. But Jehoshaphat says, yes, and um, I will go up with you, but let's first find out what the Lord says. Uh, So the king of Israel uh, summoned the prophets and he asked them, should I go to war against Ramoth Gilead or should I hold back? And they all replied, yes, go right ahead. The Lord will give the king victory. And you know, sometimes, you know, we're only gonna ask the people 
who are going to tell us what it is that we want to hear. You know, if there is anyone that is going to oppose our entitlement, we're not going to want those people to be around us, you know, because we want uh, those who are going to uh, exalt us, tell us that we're great, tell us everything that we're doing is good because we want the applause of men. We want, right. uh, we want to be exalted. Right. And so the king of Israel replied to uh, Jehoshaphat. He said, uh, is there not also a prophet of the Lord here? Jehoshaphat asked that. And he says, we should ask him the same question. Mm. So, you know, Jehoshaphat was like, I know that you got these 400 prophets. But he was like, I need to talk to the prophet that is of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Someone who we know knows the word, of, knows God, knows the word of God, right. is not afraid to speak the word of God and don't care what you think about it. That's right. You know? Uh, someone who is not going to say something just so that you can be pleased. <laughs> you know, we're going to, that prophet says, I'm going to tell you what thus said the Lord. Amen. And if you don't like it, that's just too bad. That's right. Amen. And so then the king of Israel said, uh, there is one more man who could consult the Lord for us. He says, but I hate him. <laughs> Ahab says, I hate him because he never prophesies anything but trouble for me. And his name is Micaiah, son of Imlah. Mm. All right, so Micaiah basically uh, is the prophet that, a that will tell Ahab, and he has said to Ahab on numerous occasions yeah. that God is going to kill you. You are not doing the will of God. And so Jehoshaphat said, come on, man, don't talk like that. That's not the way a king should talk. You know, let's hear what the Lord has oh, yes, to say. Right. So the king of Israel called one of his, his officials and said, okay, go get Micaiah, bring him here. And King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in their royal robes, were seated on thrones at the threshing floor near the gate of Samaria. All of Ahab's prophets were prophesying there in front of them. One of them, Zedekiah, son of Kanana, made some iron horns and proclaimed, This is what the Lord said. With these horns, you will gore the Arameans to death. All the other prophets agreed, yes, they said. Go up to Ramaz Gilead and be victorious, for the Lord will give the king victory. Right? Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, Look, all the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> he said, don't you say anything different. You have to agree with the other prophets. You know, you have people who say, don't come in here and preach anything other than, you know, the way that I think and believe how this thing should go. And don't say anything to me that is going to be contrary to what my plan is and what I want to do and how I want to do it. So when Micaiah arrived before the king, Ahab asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead or should we hold back? And Micaiah replied sarcastically, yes, go up and be victorious for the Lord will give the king victory. Amen. But the king replied sharply, how many times must I demand that you speak only the truth to me yeah. when you speak for the Lord? And so uh, Micaiah was like, I'm not playing your game. Mm. You know? 
<laughs> he was like, listen, yes, you know, but, but uh, Ahab knew that mm -hmm. he was not really giving him the word. And so then Micaiah told him in verse 17, in a vision, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, their master has been killed. Send them home in peace. So now you know Ahab is, oh my God. He was like, did I tell you? The king of Israel was upset. And he was like, Jehoshaphat, I told you we should not have called him. Because he never prophesied anything but trouble. That's right. But Micaiah wasn't finished. She said, listen to what the Lord said. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with mm. all the armies of heaven around him mm. on his right and on his left. And mm. the Lord said, who can entice Ahab to go into battle against Ramoth Gilead so he can be killed? There were many suggestions, and finally, a spirit approached the Lord and said, I can do it. And the Lord asked, how will you do this? And the spirit replied, I will go out and inspire all of Ahab's prophets to speak lies. You will succeed, said the Lord. Go ahead and do it. So you see? The Lord has put a lying mm -hmm. spirit in the mouths of all your prophets, for the Lord has pronounced your doom. Mm. My God today. Mm. So, you know, anytime that we want, when we're seeking our own will and we're seeking our own way and we are exalting ourselves, we open ourselves up to uh, curses. We open ourselves up to lying spirits. Uh, we open up ourselves to be led uh, in directions that we would have never no. been led in had we humbled ourselves no. and That's exalted right. God and just been grateful uh, to God. So, Amen. you know, that sense of entitlement is dangerous. That's right. That's right. And of course, um, you know, everything that Micaiah prophesied came to pass. Ahab was killed, like he said. Mm -hmm. You know, the armies were uh, defeated. Yeah. Even though they got mad at Micaiah, they um, threw him in jail. They said, take him back, you know, to the governor of the city and put him in prison and don't give him anything but bread and water. He said, that's what King Ahab said, until I return safely from the battle. That's but right. Micaiah replied, if you return safely. <laughs> now you know that's a promise, right? Yeah. <laughs> he said, if you return safely, it will mean that the Lord has not spoken through me. Amen. Then he added to those standing around, everyone mark my words. That's right. And so now um, hey. Micaiah's uh, prophetic word was not out of arrogance. It was out of confidence because he knew that he had heard from the Lord, that he was not saying what he was saying right. to not to displease the king or to please the king. Right. He was simply there to give the word of God. And that is what the Lord said to him. So that's what he said. You know, he did not try to mix it with his own feelings uh, for the king or, um, uh, or the people. That's None right. of that. He just simply did the word of God. And that is what, um, you know, mm. humbling ourselves. It's like, God, not my will be done, but your oh, yeah. will be done. Yeah. And we want to make sure in this hour that as we are raising our children, you know, that we are declaring to them these things, Thanks, you know, right. that we're not um, uh, allowing them to be lazy and think that they 
to just get something without working for it. Amen. Because this generation really does believe that. Yeah. They feel like, you know, I got a YouTube page, I got a Facebook page, I got an Instagram page, and I just feel like, you know, greatness should just come to me. Right. Because I took some pictures and I posted them. You know, it's like, no, you have to go, you have to work. You got to work. You got to go to work. That's right. And nothing is going to just come to you. You're going to have to sow, in other words, you know, and whatever it is that you want to see happen, you need to be figuring out, okay, well, what do I need to do to work this? Amen. You know, I I need to be able to work it. And, uh, you know, there are things that I believe in God for. I'm sure there are things that you believe in God for, Grace. You know, and so we realize that we have to know what to do. It's we have to work. Work. That's right. Into place. If I want to be successful in this area, then I need to develop a plan so that I can work that plan. And Amen. you know, we can we can pray and ask God, Lord, teach me how to take what I have and profit. And from profit. It. That's right. Amen. You know, TD Jake said uh, the problem. Uh, with our sinful behavior is an arrogant posture of entitlement. Mm -hmm. And he says, it's not what we leave to our children that makes them great. It is what we leave in our children Uh, that makes them great. You know, so we we don't have to be so focused on this inheritance that we want to leave for them. Yes, we leave for them an inheritance, but it's more about what we are teaching them, the principles that we're giving to them. Amen. Uh, you know, some of us are so busy that we really don't have time to sit down and have conversations with our children. That's and right. so we just mm-hmm. give them money. We buy them things mm-hmm. because we know that we don't have that time. We think that we're buying their affections and we're buying their love. But the truth is you are raising a child that will say to them, I don't have to work to get things. I'm I'm entitled to have all all of these things. That's right. You know, and and that I should never have to go through anything. Because there are certain movies that that I cannot watch. Because if there's the little white girl, you know, those little white girl movies where she believes that she should not have to go through anything difficult <laughs> simply because she's who she is. I cannot stand those kind of movies. I will turn them off. Yeah. And they, because they'll have me up walking because now I'm mad because I am like, what is wrong? You know, right. and even the writer, you know, uh, has that mind, whoever wrote it has that mindset, That's you know, right. so, you know, the little girl, she's upset because she's had something too difficult to deal with, you know, you know, oh my God, and she's angry, and she's, you know, acting out because, you know, come on, right, right, I can't stand that, and so, and that- you know, uh, Jace <laughs> goes on to, th- to say, he says, you, if you think uh, all you have to do is sit there long enough and that it is going to come to you, then you need to think again. That's right. You think that if you sit there long enough and you wait long enough, that it's just going to come to you just because you're supposed to have it? <laughs> you know, then you have some bad things. That's right. Because that is not how it works. And so, you know, we want to. Uh, teach our kids. We want to spend time with our kids, pouring into them uh, the principles of God and teaching them how to be grateful. Amen. You know, I just had this conversation with Kyla. Kyla six, and she was upset because you know I, I almost don't remember because it was so silly, but. She was upset because uh, she wanted to go to, to my daughter's house because uh, she was like, Grandma, I'm going to Christian's house. I'm not going to church with you. I'm going to, I'm going to church with Christians. So I was like, oh, my. you know, go ahead. And uh, so my daughter came and picked her up, took her over there. 
And then so she was just upset about uh, everything. Things not going a certain way. And so, you know, she becomes antsy about things. And uh, so, you know, just an attitude. And I said to her, I said, stop it. You know, because I tried to work with her when my daughter brought her back uh, Sunday afternoon. And so she was just so upset and she was just having little temper tantrums, you know, nothing big, but enough to, right. to you know, and I heard the Spirit of the Lord say, you need, you need to make a stop. Because it was becoming offensive. And I said to her, I said, stop it. Now you said that you wanted to go to Christian house. She left her house, came over here to get you, made sure that you had everything fed you, took you, and then you're still complaining. She got you full tea. I was like, nobody had to do that for you. That's right. <laughs> you did not have to do that for you. And I said, you don't deserve any of it. So you need to know how to say thank you for what you have done for me. Amen. And so she sat there and she listened. She Good. And about 15 minutes later, she goes, I'm sorry, Christian. I'm sorry, Grandma. And listen, you think that our kids don't understand? They, they do. won't get it. Yes, they will. That's and right. you know, I, did, I wasn't like yelling at her. I didn't have to spank her or anything. I just realized that that behavior, if we don't correct it, you know, she will start to feel. Because you know what? We encourage them to be great. We encourage them to believe in, in themselves. And we encourage them to, uh, you know, go for their dreams and, uh, you know, and conquer, things like that. No, there's nothing wrong with those things. That's right. But we also need to be teaching them, like, okay, so if it, does, if it happens, be grateful. Be if grateful. it doesn't happen, be grateful. grateful. That's right. You know? We teach them about praying. You know, like you yeah. have to pray. Because I, I tell my kids, I am not your source. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I am not your source. That's I right. never once told my kids about Santa Claus. <laughs> and you know, I've had people to say, oh, you still in their childhood? I was like, that you was stolen. <laughs> you think that they care? that the present came from uh, me and my husband because God blessed us over a Santa Claus, it never once offended them. To this day, they've right. <laughs> been offended by the fact because they don't care where it's coming from. That's right. <laughs> so, my, so you have to teach them what is right. And I've always told my kids, God blessed us to be able to give that to you. Amen. So this comes from God, you know? And so when they got a certain age, I taught them, you have to have faith in God. You have to believe God. God is your source. That's you right. You can believe God just like we can. That's right. You know, you go before God with your own faith. You have faith. Right. You know, right. so we want to train up our kids and we want to tell them, listen, you have to work. You have to work to get yeah. what it is it's that true. you think. You don't have to work for your salvation. Mm -hmm. but everything else, yeah, everything you else. have to work. That's right. You know, That's right. And so we just praise God. That's why it's so important. Not only we teach our kids, but when God calls us to go and speak to others, you know, other families, that we don't know, but we still can teach them. Yes. You know? yes. It's, it's out here. Yes. It's out here. A lot of people think they're entitled yes. to certain things, you know. Yes. But they have to realize they have to earn it. You know, they have to seek God, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, oh, I, I expect to get this today. And when it when when it don't come today. Yeah, you, you get an attitude, you know. My God, but you just gotta be grateful and thank God, you know. Mm -hmm. So we, that's what we have to do. We have to teach our children and teach others. Yes. Because a lot of, 
you know, a lot of um, things that happen in this world is because they want things and they can't get it. And they mm-hmm. go out here and get the stuff to doing the wrong. They're either behind bars or 10 feet deeper, you know. Yes, ma'am. But they have to be taught. Yes. You know. And a lot of times they go and get it and then find out, oh, I don't want this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want it. They don't want it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, you know, God will resist the proud yeah. in order to show them their need for him. That's right. We're never not going to need God. That's right. We're going to always need him. Amen. You know, we're going to need him every hour. Yes. As we say that, you know, that him. And yeah. this is what results in his glory. Amen. When the people of Ending their pride when they are ending their sense of entitlement and they yes. humble themselves yes. and say, God, this is we need you. That's right. And the intercessors, we need to be saying, God, we God. need you. you. We are not a prideful nation. Mm. I don't care how many months that they want to dedicate to pride being pride month. We are not a prideful nation. Amen. Now we humble ourselves. The scripture says, if my people who oh, are called by my name, my name will humble themselves. You know, yes. I mean, he says, humble yourself before you pray. Yes. Humble yourself before you seek me. You know, humble yourself and you will have the power to turn from your way. Amen. That's right. And he says, then I will hear. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive you of your sins. And I will heal your land. Amen. You know, so in this hour, we have to be in repentance. We have to be humbling ourselves. We need to be prayerful. God empower us to turn away from pride and arrogance and anything that is not of you. Amen. That's right. Anything that is not of you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God, we praise you. God, we thank you. Thank you. You are so good to us. Everything about you. Yes. is good and we're so grateful for, for the many blessings oh. that you load us up with daily. Thank God, you. you have given us things that we did Thank not deserve. You, you did mm. not reward us based upon our iniquity, but you allowed the grace of God uh, to fall fresh upon us, the mercies of God are new every single morning. And thank God, you. we say thank you. Thank you, thank you for oh, how Lord. you kept us. Thank you for how you blessed us. Thank, thank you for you. how you have uh, fed mm. us, how you have clothed us. God, thank we you. are grateful. We're grateful you. that you have allowed thank us you. to be alive in, in this uh, hour of the day, at this time, we're grateful, oh God, that how you have sovereignly placed us in, in, in this position to even come and to speak this word. We are grateful that we have the mind to preach yes. this kind of Hallelujah. word and to share this. Thank and God, I pray for all of those who yes, will God. hear this word. I pray, oh, oh God, that they will have humble hearts. Glory yes. to God. That they will be meek in spirit, oh God. I'm praying, God, that you will raise up a generation of people who repent, oh God. Yes, people God. who humble themselves. Oh, people yes. who resist pride for hearts. People yes. who resist a proud for look. A proud look, a prideful look, yeah. oh Lord God, of people who will resist having a prideful eye, 
Oh, Lord God, let us, oh God, be uh, those who walk in humility yes, before God. you, Father God. And we are quick to repent. God, that we're quick to call on yes. the name of Jesus. We recognize you as our Lord and as our Savior. Lord God, that we let go of fear. We let go of people pleasing. God, yes. we let go of, of trying to be our own God, trying to figure out our own ways, oh God. But just like the King Jehoshaphat said, let us inquire of the yes. Lord. Glory to God. Is there not a prophet that is of the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord God, let the prophetic word of God impact this nation. Yes. Let the prophetic word of God impact our churches, oh Lord God. Let it impact our homes, Lord. We want to hear what thus saith the Lord. God, we want your word in the morning. God, yes. we want your word in the noon day. We want your purposes and your plan to be fulfilled in the earth. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, oh God. We're calling for the will of God to be made manifest in our lives and in our hearts and in our generations to come, oh Lord God. Lord God, let our generations be one that will seek the Lord, that will seek the voice of God, that we will not make a move until we know what God has to say about it. Oh, Lord yeah. God, give us your wisdom. Yes, clothe man. us in your understanding. Lord God, clothe us in humility. God, we cancel pride. We resist pride of hearts. God, we resist it in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we clothe ourselves in humility. We put upon garments of praise and we magnify you, oh God. We thank you for everything that you have given to us. God, we thank you that whatever it is that you want to do, whatever way that you say, God, that if you want us to have it, we thank you for it. God, if you don't want us to have it, we thank you for it, oh God. We humble ourselves. Oh, Lord God, you said that if we humble ourselves, that in due season that you will exalt us, oh God. And Lord God, we want to be exalted in the way that you want us to okay. be exalted, oh God. Lord God, we declare that we deserve absolutely nothing. Oh, God, Lord, so that's why we embrace your grace. We yes, live God. in your grace, oh, God. Lord, God, we embrace your mercy. Oh, we God. cry out for mercy yes, in God. this hour. Oh, we cry out, God, that you will have mercy yes. upon this nation in yes. the name of Jesus. Lord, God, that we cry out that in repentance, God, that yes, you God. will forgive us yes. for being a nation that declares that we are prideful. Oh, Lord God, forgive us, oh God. Lord God, for operating in a way that says that we deserve to have whatever we want, whatever we want it, oh God. We repent in the name of Jesus, God, and we humble ourselves in your presence. Forgive us, oh God. Wash us and cleanse us, oh God. Help us, Lord God, to understand your purposes, to understand your way. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Lord God, we don't want you standing outside the church knocking on the door. God, we want you right in the very center, very center of our churches, and we want to be in the very center of your will, oh God. Lord God, stand in our midst. Jesus, stand in our midst and be Lord of all. Be king of kings. You're king of kings. You're the Lord of lords. We decree it and we declare it. And you're the Lord over the United States. Glory to God. The people of God declare it. The people of God cry out that Jesus is Lord. 
The people of God says that God is God and beside him there is none else. Lord God, that we will not exalt man. God, we don't want, oh God, the fake thing. We want the real thing, oh God. We don't want transgender. God, we want transformation. We want it to come from you, oh God. We don't want a duplicate. No, no, we don't want a, a, a replica uh, thing here, God. We want the real thing. We want it to be real, though, God. We don't want the fake. Hallelujah. God, we want the real. We want transformation. We want the glory of God. We want the glory of God to fall upon this nation. Have mercy upon us. Yeah, God, have mercy, Lord. Have mercy upon us. We repent, Lord God, and we turn away, oh Lord God, from our own doing. We turn away, oh God. Have mercy on us and forgive us, Lord. Yes. God, heal our land, Jesus. Heal our land. Lord God, heal our land. Lord, people are dying. Lord God, people are using people to gain. People are murdering one another. Our children, oh Lord God, are strung out on drugs and alcohol. Father, forgive us in the name of Jesus. Oh God. Hallelujah. Oh God, we take responsibility. Lord God, or if there's anyone in our bloodline, in our maternal bloodline or our paternal bloodline that made an agreement with our demonic entities. God, we repent of it as if it was ourselves, God, because we do not want that passed down to us and we do not want it passed down to our children. So Father, we repent of it in the name of Jesus. Lord God, for every proud look, we repent, oh God, for every perverse, prideful tongue. God, we repent in the name of Jesus. Anything that we said, oh Lord God, that was an offense to you, that said, God, that we are operating in pride, that we are self-centered, that we don't care what you think. Lord God, when we exalted ourselves, God, we repent in the name of Jesus. Wash us and cleanse us. Forgive us, oh God. Lord God, let the washing of the water of your word wash us clean. Let the blood of Jesus break down beds of wickedness. Oh Lord God, in our hearts we turn away from such things, oh God. Lord God, empower us, oh Lord. God, empower us to humble ourselves. Lord God, that we will get down and on our knees and we will be meek in spirit. God, because we do not want you to fight against us. Lord God, we don't want to be the people of God that you fight against, oh God. We don't want you opposing us. So God, we know that we are nothing without you and that we can do nothing without you, oh Lord God. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us and wash us clean. Hallelujah. We resist our prideful spirits. Hallelujah. We resist the devil. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have mercy, Lord.